basically what I wanted to bring up today is just kind of modeling for handrails separate from the usual straight railings we're used to. We had come up with kind of a consensus that if we have multiple panels on straight railing with the top cap, we can model them together as just one system and then just one big panel. And we had gone through, or at least I had gone through comparing NEPLA to modeling and RISA to show that, okay, even if you have multiple panels, they all behave together as long as you've got a top cap that spans all of those panels together. Um, it doesn't matter if you've got a really weak top cap or a really stiff top cap, it'll, for the most part, drop them all in one system. You can use software. Um, Something that I found is if you try to do that with multiple panels on a stair where you have like angles, they're not just a straight rectangle, you end up with different behavior that metal is not going to pick up on. So, in this is just like a basic three panel model and a landing that I put together. There's it's using the weak top cap. It's really low IX. You end up with this kind of potato chip behavior in the panels, and you get a gap that opens up in that system. And if you model the same thing in Nebula, something like this, where it's just a single panel, you don't have the gaps, you don't get that same behavior. So Essentially, what I'm suggesting is we need to be modeling all of these stair rails in RISA, similar to what's shown here, with our point fittings, whatever your heights are, your top cap, and then those reactions that you're using point fittings need to be taken back to check the whole stresses and to make sure that works out the way that we're thinking it does because of this different fit watching. So if you model is it the we of the strong uh IX like cap rails that the difference between this two? No, these are the same. Yeah, the same top cap, but one is representing like a shoot out uh, that's continuous along the bottom, and the other one's um, six point fittings per panel. It's kind of hard to see. Got it right. But they're they're the same wood case, same top cap, same panel. Another quick question is this assume that the top cap is mechanically somehow connected because well, let's say they're just butting up two you know spans of of railing together where it's not a wraparound handrail. Do we need to model like that or is that considered still the straight one that we could do with that one? I think as long as it bridges two it, panels. Yeah, the, the cap has to be strong enough to stop those panels from separating. So sheer. But what I'm saying is this one modeled as though the top cap is like continuous. You have a right. corner. But if you don't have a true corner and it's just two rails butted up with no cap that like has that angle, it's just two caps that end. Right. You won't have that same reaction at the corner. No, and that, that's something you would have to account for in this model. Like if you have up here at this top corner, like you're saying, if the cap is continuous across that point here, like you're saying, if you have a turn of the rail where it's not continuous around the corner, yeah, you gotta leave the gap in um, to make sure you account for that. And in that case, you don't really need to model the whole thing and you can you could model those sections of right. So if yeah, if you have another panel that's going on in that direction, if you've got a gap in the corner, you don't have to model that panel. That's so that'd be three straight sections that we would just handle at seven. That's what I'm getting at. This? If the, if the top cap, if the top rail isn't continuous around the corner, this then you have here. Yeah, yeah. You have three in this model two, but if you had that third one, you would have three separate just straight line rails to analyze. Right. So if there's a there's a gap up here at this corner, yeah, you could have okay. that at the hand. Okay, that's why I'm uh, okay. but I think what what kind of also <clears throat> getting at is even if, if the straight part is separated from the slope, the slope part don't model in Metla as a one big piece of glass that's spoke, you still have to go through what right are you going to explain the reaction rules yeah okay. 
he's going to explain that here in a little bit. But even if you only if your your uh, handle is just a slope on a on a, you know, a staircase. Uh, in the past, I think we've been modeling just a metal as a big piece of glass compared to a pound that has a cap. So you can take the whole thing as one big piece of glass. But what Brian brought up a couple weeks ago is that even if you have a base shoe straight, you still need to go to what he's going to explain on Lisa uh, because you do have that continuity effect on slope to raising. So just real quick as an example, you're saying if you get rid of that panel at the end like that. And this is a normal error. Yeah. You still have so to wait, is that slope? Yes. yes. Okay, I have to that was slope. I thought it was just okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're still gonna but if it's a not sloped if so as long as it is a straight rectangle system like this. No okay. angles, all 90 degrees. You can model them either one. You can model as a panel. If you have any kind of angle, like a stair okay. or a ramp or anything. Okay, like again, that, this is just a question. I guess it's yeah. Right. Well, not not just stairs. Anything that's not like a 90 degree panel, you're gonna have issues like this. Okay. So to account for this like i'm saying you need to model it in risa and just as an example with like 50 pounds per foot you get about two and a half inches of deflection 200 pound point low you're looking at about 639 if you go and model this uh, in mepla as just a single panel your deflection for 200 pounds goes up about a tenth but for 50 pounds per foot you gain half to three quarters of an inch and same for the stress you end up with stresses in different locations so like the straight rail with the shoe you end up with kind of a hot spot in that middle panel because the point loads in the center and then for 50 pounds per foot kind of the same thing you get hot spots at those corners you get a hot spot at that uh, point now but as a single panel and that one, you don't get those hot spots at the corners. It just tries to distribute it because it basically thinks it's one giant panel. And especially on like the 50 pounds per foot load case, you get a really high stress riser at that inside the corner because it, it can't account for that gap between the panels. And then you're losing out on the actual hot spots. So with that said um what you can do to actually account for this is when you model everything in risa you end up with all your reactions that we want supports if you're using a shoe mount you can just model it directly in risa and just put all the things you know stresses all your reactions that way because there's no holes risa can account for everything else as long as your mesh is small um, so with point fittings, you can get all your reactions out. I had made a spreadsheet to just do the conversion to use the things to follow. And then plug that in the MEPLA as type two in the point fittings. So the same as the spider fittings, but instead of it being support, you're actually applying what you're fitting. And then you'll you'll end up with something like this for just your single panel and pull the reactions for you can see you get your whole hot spot for the control and stress and instead of being 150 something because of that corner that isn't really our control corner you end up with about 79 in this case this is a random example so it cuts the stress you're going to get out of the model about half. it still technically doesn't work but it's more accurate so in the uh, in the model that you have there uh, the support conditions are also the load places. Uh, the, uh, the point, the point things are also the. Yes. So what you've got to do in Metla, the you're basically looking at the panel backwards. So instead of fixing your point loads and having the load at the top. 
you've actually got to fix that top end. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Where yeah. your support condition is? So but, you, right, you've got your six top. fittings, and then in this case, I just used type five of dark array, type one, to fix that edge. So your your deflection is not going to match entirely. So. Like here, it's just saying that this bottom corner is kicking out instead of getting that kind of potato chip shape that the recent model showed. Back to that. So, what do you use for deflection purposes? Just the recent model? Yeah, the recent output is what I've been doing because it it better accounts for the support for multiple panels of whatever the stiffness of that top cap is going to be. Is there a quick way to check on the RISA other than going to the results spreadsheet? How about the amount? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, just going back to this real quick, kind of cap this off. Do not use the deflection with a method of model like this because it's not going to match the full system behavior. So, you really would want the global deflection from what that top cap shows you with the local stress from the whole thing. So I, I can give kind of a better list for this going forward because we can kind of standardize this stuff anyways. But, um, so what hot mirrors they ask me? So like your peak deflection is kind of at the center of this middle panel. What you can do, just select those nodes. And over here on the toolbar, there's this filter. And then from there, it'll cut down the stiffness that you're given. Sort of, uh, your maximums. So you're st it's still you, you can narrow down the number of nodes by excluding the other ones. Right. But you still have to go through the spreadsheet that spits out there. Mm -hmm. It's not like what we do more means that there's a there's a graph so you to see it. Um you should actually you can I think as long as you've modeled that as a number. Oh yeah, you can click on shape. Yeah, there's so there's actually just a full length member there that you can go through detail report on. It looks kind of funky, but it's the way people look at two hundred pounds. That's basically what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that should be max the maximum device. It should. I've always used a node table for that. So you're just modeling the entire um, guard and RISA, and then wherever you find that the reactions are the highest, you just model that over and top. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's how I was doing that. Because if you're looking at like the stress output, Or say your 200 pound point case with those point loads, you can see the center panel's got the worst stress. That kind of tells you, okay, your your worst case reaction should be at that panel too. Oh, that's okay. Kind of the that thing. Or like you're saying, you can values reaction. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, for like this upper example, this the she mount. You can see that the stresses are only about three KSI at that corner. The mesh is kind of coarse, so I would probably double this down. But yeah, as long as your model and the plate is the equivalent, then you should be able to use that and justify the area that she mount works. Did you <coughs> did you ever end up comparing this to using springs? Like soft springs and in that book? Did it count or a little piece of glass over? You're talking about like if you have corners? Yeah, just on like if you model, because typically how I've been doing this up until now is I model a single panel mm -hmm. and then I put a spring to account for the next piece of glass. So I'll run the glass with no spring, find the deflection, then get your P over X or whatever and put that spring in there in your corner. And that essentially kind of accounts for the next piece of glass over right. without actually accounting for it. Yeah, I've tried to do that. But getting that kind of deflection shape out of it doesn't really work. So I'm going to flex that. 
Because basically what Matt's saying is instead of modeling the whole thing, put a spring at that corner and then a spring at that corner and just try to model this center panel. But you're you're never really gonna get that kind of potato chip effect on the top by doing that. And also I think uh one problem I was discussing is on the on that day project. Mm -hmm. Uh it's kind of chasing your own tail because how do you come how how do you come up with the proper stiffness up there to come with the next panel? And then that next panel if you also need a, a spring somewhere up up from it. Right. You can you can get close, but I don't necessarily know how you actually do that. Show that you're gonna get that kind of behavior. I think you have to run it recently to compare that model to because you don't really ever get, I guess, kind of get that. Or Mepla doesn't show as detailed of a deflection thing. I can't remember. But I think you'd have to compare it, put a spring on it, brace up, see if it acts the same, I guess. But yeah, usually what I ended up doing was I calculate one and then I soften it until. You know, it was like, okay, that seems like it's really mm -hmm. enough to count for a lot of them. And then I kind of double check stuff, but usually I just soft enough on those. So I've done that in the past to the getting in like those big multi panel things. It's, it feels like it's more accurate and safer. I don't know. Yeah, the only reason I ask, I guess, is just mm -hmm. that this is something we'll have to be careful of when it's recording and stuff because this could be a time sink. Right, so I guess with that said, and then show you guys how I'm importing these two. I guess another quick thing while you're doing that, uh, just to kind of think through, it's like you said, technically you went through it all and it still failed. Sometimes you can run the thicker glass, and you know you can run it as a single panel and it'll work. So it's something I don't know if we do go through something like this, we kind of kind of think through. Some sort of a quick check to be like, okay, we're, we're around here. Is this even going to help or not? Or are we just going to need to increase glass thickness anyways? Well, once once you get everything into Risa, it's pretty easy to change point thickness. Select all and change to whatever your new point is going to be. Mm. So, how much different is the is the stress? Associated between RISA, your RISA model, and then backing into your MEPA model. So, and I, I, I understand that we can't get to the same thing with RISA because, you know, especially in point fittings, because right. it's not going to accurately model around the, around the point fitting. So, on just as like a consistent comparison, the, the RISA model with the shoe mount. 200 pound point load, we're getting about 3 KSI. I think that went up when I refined the mesh a little more. For 50 pounds per foot, we're at about nine and a quarter. With MEPLA, for this 200 pound point load, you're not failing yet. You're about five or six KSI, but then you get to this LC2, this 154, it's like 11 or 12 KSI. So uh, I'm, I'm meaning whenever you, you <coughs> accurately model it you know, re, with the reverse uh, reactions in SJ MEPA, how close, you know, what's the difference between the stress of the recent model? I don't think you can compare it because the, the whole modeling in that flow can't do that. You're just you're just getting a reaction. I just I didn't know if there was some type of a uh, uh, a way to be able to quickly tell. You know, is it an order of magnitude two or you know? I don't, I don't is it you know because you can't do it that way. It, it it cannot be done that way because the the, the model itself is it's it's working different. It, in like what Ryan's showing, it's working uh, with different panels that have a gap between them. In the other way, in MEPLA is taking uh, into account the whole the whole glass as one itself. So it it district in, in when you we use base and the and the 
and the 200 towns, it distributes the load in, the, in, in all the section. But when you, we have the 50 pounds per feet uh, load in the top cap, uh, the, 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 just the, the, that vertex comes to have a, a, a maximum stress that it's, it's way over that, that so, allowable. No, I, I understand that. And I understand the reason why we can't do this in, you know, NEPLA, you know, ac accurately, because if we're not going to be able to, you know, have individual panels, I'm just, I'm asking, whenever we take it into reset, we have the individual panels, and then we get the reactions back out, and we take it, those reactions into MEPLA, what are the stresses compared with the analysis through RESA compared with MEPLA stresses in that model where we just use the reactions? Is there an order of magnitude that we can compare to be able to quickly say, okay, we're in the ballpark with the RESA model or, you know, not in the ballpark with the RESA model? You probably have to go do some comparisons because the, the load on the fitting may not translate to the same stress depending on what's the tanker on the fitting, yeah. what the sizes are, like the bushes and stuff. Right. I think it comes down to how fine the mesh and resub versus metal, right? The, the number of elements in metal. Well, it, not even really that because metal is actually modeling the whole. And then all the rubber and the barriers. Yeah. And stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like, so the, 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 how the struts on the middle is the same as the Risa panel versus the Risa. Right. And it's kind of like in the Risa, you can't really get to that side. One side, you're smashing. That's like a point correctly. So, the finer you make that. So, it's going to be in this model, yeah, yeah, So this doesn't change how we look at a standard handrail with a 90 degree corner all at the same point. Yeah. As long as it's that's what I was worried about because that long would change it, everything up really. Yeah, as long as it's straight 90 degree panels and a big rectangle, and you can keep doing all shit. Okay, you start getting that's what I need to get those right. Yeah, um, I was just talking to them a little bit offline about the fact that during that discussion. And go ahead, Ben. Oh, so on that page where it shows the the met love that shows the stress on there. Okay. Okay. Stage. Yeah. I, Is that at the corner? Oh, oh okay. uh, page 10. Um, I converted that to KSI. That, oh, get there. Yeah, that stress, that's heavy. That's about 11 and a half KSI. Mm -hmm. And then I compared that to the stress on page six. Which is like 9.3 psi. Now that 9.3 peak is for the corner for the base sheet. Right, that's a base sheet. It's not right. a. Uh, it's not it's a not point. So if you're looking at that, that that point fitting down below, that's actually more purple. Right, it's just down around like five and a half, six and a half neighborhood. Okay, so um, so and part of that's because of my coarse mesh too. If you start refining that mesh, your stresses are going to shoot way up because you got this to. Right. So, okay. So, so this is just solely for the reaction, so that you right. The, yeah, these stress graphics that are in here are more yeah. just examples to look at. Okay, where are your peaks going to be versus what metal shows you the peaks are yeah. to show that metal is not picking up all the right locations for the place. Hmm. Can you use this model to have a a actual handrail instead of the top cap? Yes. So that was where I was going to go back to is kind of how to import this into the Risa from okay. um, just to help speed this up a little bit. So whenever you get your shop drawing, you got to have a cat drawing of your hand sizes and stuff. So basically, all you need to do is just draw a four sided panel for each glass plate and then a line for your top cap. Or like Kyle saying, if you have a handrail, you can draw a line for wherever the handrail is. So whenever you go back to Risa, you can just go file, import, VXF, 
Some of you guys probably use this for curtain walls and stuff. Same thing. Uh, why vertical? If you set different layers for like your glass and your top cap. So if your glass edges are on like glass layer, put your top cap on a top cap layer. You can tell recent also you can port those into the sections. So then from there, you're just going to get your normal layout or what you want to work on. And from there, all you need to do is just draw your plates around your lines, delete the lines, set all your supports, loads, all that stuff. If you have a thing, you have to import the documents <clears throat> from, from CAD so that they can eat up those pins. Right. So all of these lines that imported down here on these lower panels, or drawn in the CAD file as lines to the center of the circles where the fittings are going to be. You could also add points. Yeah, you can use points as well. Those are a little harder to see sometimes. Yeah. But it, can, it works either way as long as there's a point in the CAD. There's a, there's a way to like change what your points look like. So yeah. Okay. yeah, I know there is. I know these guys are <laughs> okay. trying to make it easier. Got lines or something. <laughs> So then basically you just need to delete the portion of the line that's not your support, add your fixed support points or whatever directions it needs to be to match the fitting, and then mesh it and you're done. So from drawing, once you have this drawn to importing it into a piece of getting it all set up and stuff, I've gotten it down 15 minutes to half an hour after you've done it a couple times, but I know the first time or two is going to take so, I mean, what the what I was getting at with the that can grab a hand right now. Not the top cap. They're usually point supported on the glass. Some of them, right? So, how are you accounting for the stiffness of that if it's only coming at points within the glass? Does that make sense? What I'm yeah. trying to say. So, how can you model the stiffness of the grass bar through the points? Yeah, yes. We take that top cap, and I'm just going to copy it down like 12 inches. And then, like you're saying, say it's ported every <laughs> inch. Yeah, I'm just going You can take that rail that you had that you drew in plane and then move it in the Z direction. Say we come out three inches. And as long as you've got nodes along that span, copy goes back the other direction. If they like a rigid support screen. Right. So you can then draw your support back to that point. Real quick draw plate here so we can actually show you. And then whenever you go and actually submission that plate, so it'll pick up on that node for that support. And now you've got a railing that's Connected to that panel. Okay. That's kind of long. Sure. Well, the, How does this compare to what Sierra Lawrence's uh, ICC testing reports and whatnot for their top cap go? I mean, if they're saying like you can only have a maximum span of let's say 48 inches. Well, you're talking about checking the top cap itself. Yeah, because typically we rely on that, but for the top cap, this is for checking the glass. Stressed around holding the stuff. I get that, but if we're modeling the stiffness of the top cap, we really should probably be looking at it. Yeah. And I mean, the accuracy of that is hard to do. Can you do that in reset just by eliminating the panel and then? Yeah, you can delete the plates and stuff. Yeah. Delete the plates out and run the, you know. Run the like top cap in there for the. This yeah. other model that I use for like screenshots and stuff. Well, I guess you could just set the like what I'm getting at what we talked about last week. Well, on three light rails that are stainless steel extruded 
Mm -hmm. I don't want to say extreme stainless steel, but there's stainless steel. Well, stainless steel technical has its own design code that we don't have access to. And it's not a standard okay. shape that you can just take from Risa and whatnot. So it, it depends on that. what you're doing with stainless, because what you were looking at was a light gauge stainless flesh stuff. Yeah. If you're talking about thicker parts, you can just use that. Just with the different properties. But like what you're saying, you can, as long as you're meeting that span requirement from ICC, they've already tested it and said it's okay to do that. So that's what I use to justify it. As well, long as you're within well, I'm say, four ahead. foot max, as long as your panel gap is wider than four foot. Again. But I'm thinking ahead. If ICC says four, mm -hmm. we check it. Okay, stress, shear, everything says that we can only have a two foot wide panel. How do we go back to our client and say the ICC test report wrong? That, that, that's what I'm getting at. Is the it's going to be a point I have to address when you get to that because it's there's so many other. But I mean, I think redundancy is in the system. We only look at one equation for the shear and one equation for the problem, but the redundancy is in a tested assembly. Yeah. We would say we can't mimic or we can't reproduce all the things that happen on the test. I would rely on the test. Yeah. So it's a, I, in the same way that we rely on test for like some of the last stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the, the couple of times I have checked the top cap by hand, they've been the same. Yeah, and it probably should be, but you know, ultimately, if we've got an ICC report, that's a trusted report, and I think that we should be able to use the information in there, and and that's a limit. You just use it and reference it and say it falls within the uh, four foot, you know, the ICC report, and you don't have to run through the analysis on the on the top cap. Is it four foot wide or four foot at the length of the hypotenuse? Four foot from point to point. Yeah. So corner to corner. Okay. That's why I was getting there. Oh, yeah, whatever the maximum is supposed to be. Okay. Um, would you just go ahead and tell them to cock the turn to release cost release? Or like, would you make like a an element along the edges that you want to check deflection and just have them have like a zero of strength and just check their Are you talking about for the vertical joints? Yeah, for the vertical joints. Off the glass edges. Like you did you want to tick off the other <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think we're like pinching out here. That is the pinch point. Like yeah. when they get the glass thickness, and this you can't deflect over the glass thickness. So in this case, this is very exaggerated because this is 32 times. Right. It should be that. So, yeah, we dial it back. It really okay. isn't so that much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it, it's just an example that Metal is not accounting for that gap correctly. Okay. So, the differential between those edges should be fairly small. Okay. So, not having the seal on the glass walls, it would. Okay. I mean, I could see how bad it would be even against it, or bad against that it could kind of pinch, mm -hmm. you know, hazard. But, you know, but, definitely at the corners, if the corners don't have that return around, man, that's a, that'd be a bad deal. It would be so much easier if we could just tell all our clients, go to Lowe's, go to somewhere, buy a sign, but just literally put on the glass handrail, put on the glass wall that says, do not touch glass. <laughs> be done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Architects aren't okay with anything, but I don't know anybody who's okay with anything the architects actually do. Yeah. So they are done. Nice job, Ryan.